عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Feels like I was just there yesterday. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الشيخ المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم ونزلكم سيدي يا رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم مدري يا سيدي يا سلطان الرضي من شيخ عبد الفيز الدغستاني سيدنا الشيخ محمد ناظم عبد الحكاني مولانا الشيخ هشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد عادل عبد الخالق الخوشتواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا أبو بكر الصديق سيدنا أمه سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام سيداتنا فاطمة عليه السلام وصايرة وصداتنا وصدقينا الفاتحة أرجو الشفاة يا رسول الكريم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول للأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah that we spent the month of Safa together with blessings of this Divinely Cave, Subhanahu Man Hu Alim Al Hakim and as this month is coming to its end and the tajalli of this month coming to its end, the great month of Rabbil Awal, the reality of that cave opening and the third lunar month and the immensity of the reality of 27 and the door to the heavenly kingdom. And this uh, Surah 27, Surah Al Nam is about the kingdom that was by example of Sayyidina Sulaiman in which Allah had subjected everything to the heavenly king and that was a symbolic symbol and understanding of the kingdom of the heavens. That if the Prophet on earth can have such a thing, imagine that the Prophet and the owner of that reality on earth and in the heavens. So has immense, immense reality of the, the mulk and the kingdom and that's the immense blessings of Allah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Rabbil Awwal, that is the tajalli of Rabbil Awwal comes in Monday night, Tuesday night, whenever they call it in Medina to Munawwara, everybody keep posted. Immediately shower, the overall is on the app, how to welcome the month and the celebration of the birth of all creation, the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad and the immensity of the birth of light. That Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known and we pray that Allah open within our hearts that light, that reality. But Ya Rabbi I want to know your realities and let that light to be born within my heart by the celebration of Milad al-Nabi the giving of food and water wells and every good deed and action and the immensity of the actual milad and having the milad all the time, inshaAllah we have three days a week all the time. So this is an immense opportunity and its tajalli is uniquely different than any other tajalli because of the celebration throughout the entire kingdom of the Divine. Can imagine if the way we talk about this reality 
what type of dress and what type of lights upon the kingdom and all the malaika and every, every holy soul and every holy prophet, how much Allah is bringing the celebration for the Milad al Nabi and everything is an expression of love and celebration for the reality of Prophet Allah made the earth to be beautiful because His Holy Prophet would be walking upon this earth. Made the flowers to give a fragrance and an and a expression of love when they hit the warmth of the sun as a reality of the fragrance of love. That when you love the Divine and love the prophetic reality how much the, the fragrance of the Divine opens within the heart and the soul of people. And it's so important that to understand our power and our ability that all of these talks of energies and, and realities and the talks of manifestation. If we go about our life continuously thinking negative, thinking, I'm sick, I'm this, I'm that, you are a very powerful creation. And as a result of that you begin to make an intention and a dangerous intention within the self that begins to manifest these energies and those energies actually make the person sick, make their destiny to be bad, make all the actions, all the negativity to begin to manifest. And if we're understanding anything from the tariqah it's about the immense love that you have to be in control of this energy, in control of the intention and all of the power that Allah is describing to the tariqahs of what Allah gave to us of an ability that we make an intention towards goodness, we make an intention towards Divinely light and Divinely love, we make an intention that we want to be because every action its intention is most powerful. The intention is what sets all of the energy of that creation now to produce and to manifest that reality. So the best of intentions, the cleanest of intentions, I want to be with the Prophets because God loved the Prophets. And the Prophet that I want to be with is the Prophet that I've learned from and understand I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And as he taught me about the lives of all the Prophets, that becomes our intention in this way of love. As a result the power that God has given to us with the power of faith we begin to manifest our path. And that's what tawassul bi haqqi wa tawassul bi sabr, make your, your path and your way based on truth and have patience and dedication so that the path can begin to open for the servant and begin to understand what their path is. But if you make your path all negativity, all darkness, all badness, everything I'm sick, oh this is like this, this, you're making that path and you're making and allowing that to manifest and that's the danger. So that's why then the, 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 the guidance is always so clear about Divine love, Divine ishq about the prophetic reality, the best of examples because we have to have an example in life. That my Lord I'm asking with intention not just to be good, I don't know who's, who's the standard of good but I want to be good like Sayyidina Muhammad beatific character, beatific love, beatific grace, the love that you have for your prophetic reality that make that to be a dress and a blessing upon myself. As we live a life with that manifestation your path begins to open and the beauty and the magnificent power of that path. And that's what we're trying to convey with these teachings and the portals and manifestation is that you make an intention, educate and learn from these realities and God gives you the power for that to manifest. As a result it becomes a doorway for yourself, step in and move into that reality. And the greatest of doorways and the greatest of mountains of realities is the love of the prophetic reality, the love of Muhammad So Allah gives us this opportunity in Rabbil Awwal that is Allah is celebrating and 
and the whole the atmosphere of celebration and lights and love and Divine love and Divine grace because God wanted to be known by His prophetic reality. The face of God are the realities of the Prophets because we said that everything is based on the face. If our whole life is just to emulate the reality of the Prophets and the Prophets' realities have to do with the submission of the Holy Face and they represent the face of the Divine and that was their, their grace and their beauty and their nearness to Allah And those who loved them, they loved the Divine face and as a result they drew near to the Divinely Presence because they represent God's hearing. Remember in Hadithul Qudsi that, when you come to me with all your mandatory prayers, you've done everything God has asked of you and then you begin to come towards me through your voluntary worship, going and doing extraordinary acts of worship, feeding, giving, doing, serving, being kind to people and creatures. That's a, a Divine grace and what God's promise when you do good and, and act good, I'll become the hearing in which you hear. I'll become the seeing in which you see, I'll become the breath in which you breathe, I'll become the hands in which you touch, I'll become the feet in which you move. Means God takes over our senses, Allah is taking over our senses and the most powerful of them is then the holy face. That's what makes the Prophets the Prophets is that their ears submit for God, their eyes submit for God, their breath and their talk and their speech and their guidance is for Allah and every breath they take is a breath of power. So that's the inheritance that the Prophets have left for us is that make your face like a prophetic reality. Submit the ears, submit the eyes, submit the breath and the energy so that one can perfect themselves and lead a life of goodness and kindness inshaAllah. Pray that Allah accept our month of Safar and grant us an entry into the holy month of Rabbil Awwal. Forgive all our wrongdoings and bad actions by the barakah and the blessings of all awliyaullah, by the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad intercession of the holy companions Ahlul Bayt and all the awliyaullah, khasatan Sayyidina Abu Ahmad Suhuri. Qaddasallahu siru that his nazar be upon the jamaad and, and the naqshbandiyatul aliyya and by virtue of the secret that Allah gave to these blessed souls that saved us from calamities and difficulties and bad characters. And by the grace of Allah that He forgives us and allows us to complete the month of Safar and enter into the holy month of Rabbil Awwal dressed and blessed with the light and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Barakah shafat ya Rasulul Kareem, Ameen. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah we had a lot of uh, people now thinking that they're open for us and understanding that these people talk about portals and science and energies. And alhamdulillah all of Qur'an, all of Qur'an is all of these realities. We call it paradise and we call it the paradise energy that is available for people on this earth. And if they have a love for the Divine and their love is true, they should be seeking out halakas of zikr, the circles of zikr, they should be seeking out all the secrets and the realities that Prophet gave to us about paradise. And anyone whom runs for those and tries to understand those holy hadith about Prophet about paradise is as if opening a portal upon this earth for them, their families, their children and their communities inshaAllah. Have any, any questions? And Always remember this is the month to, to be most active and, and to do what we can to, to celebrate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, the circles of zikr, muraqaba, and these maqams are portals of paradise. Does this mean we are completely cleansed once we enter that portal? 
Yeah, Mawlana shaykh would often say, if I talk too much about the immense rahmah and immense mercy that Allah will bestow upon His creation through all of these realities and all these teachings, people will be astonished and not do anything. They'll be so satisfied in their heart that Allah has, has, has cleaned and blessed them of everything. So it's, it's best to think Allah has washed away everything, every difficulty taken away but in my life at every moment I'm creating new difficulties. There are 700 goodnesses I should be doing on a daily basis and many of which I, they, they say probably at least 690 of them nobody knows what they are because they can only come up with like 10 things they think are wrong. So there are many things that God has willed for us, wanted for us and we're not fulfilling. So we know that we're coming short, we know that we come short with our families, our children and our communities. As a result we must always struggle and strive for the highest and the best. And we described before that once you think you've done the best you can for yourself, you made your istighfar, you, you, you did your, your, your amal, your actions, you, you were of support and, and service, you did everything. Now you cleansed you but you're also now responsible to cleanse all those whom you love because paradise without your children, your family and loved ones, what you're going to do there alone? So means that now your good actions and good deeds start to clean other people as you pray for them. I pray for my mom, my father, my family, my loved ones, my children. So it's not that you're only there to get your own reward, you're ambassador for everyone you love. And in reality you find out one day you're actually an ambassador for all your descendants. That they're continuously praying for you like a marathon, they're praying that you get to your goal and that they can be raised by virtue of you. So any, anyone who has descendants in many different directions, that's why the tariqahs all have new people. People not from a Muslim background because God's love is not uh, only upon Muslims, God's love is for all His creation. He inspires from different races, different nationalities, different backgrounds, come sit in this garden of roses, fragrant yourself with, with a reality that your descendants have never had, mine or somebody else's descendants never had, come and fragrant yourself in these realities and this beatific rose garden and that all of the descendants will be dressed and blessed by that. So it's God's infinite mercy and compassion that, that you see the Sufi groups are circles like the UN, it's like the United Nation of, of Paradise. It's not like Islamic centers where you go and there's a Pakistani center, it's an Afghani center, they, they don't mix, they, there's only one group of people, Fiji centers, only Fijians. That's not the symbol of a Jamil Nas, when the presence of Prophet is present because they would come into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and ask him that it's amazing, your companions they're not tribal, they're from everywhere. And the secret was I'm Jami al Nas is that reality is that I'm the gatherer of mankind. So of course the collection of my people must be from all over the world. And that's why the halakas of zikr and the turuqs and tariqahs are exact miracle of that reality. That from all different nationalities they drop their national identity and sit in the garden of paradise and praise Allah and His most beloved Sayyidina Muhammad They take that fragrance and that love and they go back into their homes and, and spread that love and that fragrance and that light inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Forgive my ignorance. When Allah says, neither the heavens nor the earth can contain me but the heart of the believer, is it a portal? Yeah, we, that's all we've been talking about, that the heart of the believer is the portal. We just said the heart of Prophet is, is, the, is the complete portal. So it's the gift that God has given to us. 
because he didn't give it to a monkey and a giraffe that he gave them a gift, a doorway into his paradise and it's not their head. So when they watch TV and they watch sci-fi uh, alien shows and they say, oh we are the head and the brain and we can transfer the thought of the brain to the other brain, everything for them is brain. But Allah is clarifying, God Almighty is clarifying, you know, what do you need for a brain? Actually you don't need a brain, you need a heart. And if the heart is enlightened becomes the cave of God. I'm not on heaven, not on earth but I'm in the heart of my believer. So definitely if the light enters into the heart of the believer their heart becomes a cave. But more important is that you have to enter into a cave so that you can be from the cave and the companions of the cave. That was the whole talk of this month that we want to enter the mountain of Prophet he's the Jabal. And the mountain and the cave of Prophet ﷺ's heart, we have to enter into it. So the shaykhs are a portal. So find the shaykh, connect with the shaykh and he's your portal into that reality. And that you have to be able to communicate with them, connect, meditate, understand all the realities, take these knowledges in a continuous relationship. As a result of every week sitting and listening and being taught with the tarbiyah, communicating through help me and building that relationship, you build an affinity and a love for that teaching. And with the respect and love your heart opens like a rose and that illumination of light enters in and now you're able to enter into the portal of the shaykh. Once you entered into the portal of the shaykh that is in the heart of the heart of the hearts and the hearts of the shaykhs all the way into the mountain and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And one who sits within that long enough becomes from that. And then their heart becomes a portal and a means in which to approach the Divinely Presence. And that's why Allah described, I gave no man two hearts. Either you're going to be a portal towards the Divine or the, your heart becomes a portal towards your desires. And those desires begin to manifest because you're a powerful creation. So as we talked many years of, be careful what you put into your heart and what is it that you want because Allah said, I didn't give anyone two hearts. You have an opportunity to make the heart a portal and a love for the Divine, then you nourish it, practice and do everything that's been taught and you enter in. Or your heart will be attracted to other things. And if it does then it becomes a portal into that reality and then you lose the portal towards the Divine because you can't have two hearts. And that's why we said that everything has to be, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah ma fi qalbi ghayrullah nur Muhammad sallallah means the heart is, is only a cave for Allah and His Rasul Everything else is in the jigar and the liver because that's a, a cave, that cave is a portal and yes everything, everything towards that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah So would it be correct to say that concerts are portals to hell? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that before. That's why the, the those concerts and those events, those are, are very high level priests. Those, those singers are not paid by shaitan 100 million, 200 million, 1 billion, 5 billion, whatever you want to call it. Whatever they're being paid for, they, they're going to be working for and shaitan has paying them because of a reason. So it means they are burning and destroying the souls of people. And when you go there we said all of their ceremonies are exactly uh, of those types of rituals. Uh, fire is burning and going in the air, they're raising their hands and telling people to take allegiance to them. And everybody's hands are up and waving and they know or they don't know but they're definitely taking, taking an allegiance to these realities, these lights and these energies. And fortunate are those whom they go, they come back and alhamdulillah Allah didn't let them to get possessed. But the danger and the subtleness is so subtle 
that literally people can move around and all of a sudden energies affect them, they become possessed, something entered into them and very difficult to, to rid them of these types of difficulties. And that's why you see people they lose their mind in an instant, you saw this person seem was normal all of a sudden their mind is gone. The mind is very, very delicate like a string, you, you play with it in the wrong way, dabble in the wrong things and these energy enter and they don't leave. And if they enter they flip the head and the consciousness of the person and nothing, nothing. You look in them they look like they're gone and they're lost. That's why then the symbol and then the reality is you have to arm yourself, you put your tawis, put the tawis on the car, tawis on the homes, everything is an energy battle. Recite the madad, recite and, and open up the portal within your home, open up the energies within your home and these are our protections. And we said before that a day of difficulty comes, if this is not your practice like a fireman. You know firemen they train with their boot and their pants all in one place and they jump into it in the middle of their sleep. It's just a second nature if they hear the alarm they're in their pants and boots at the same time. Our life is like that, not with your pants and boots but with zikr, with your madad, with your practices. And when you acknowledge, I want that, you're going to start having dreams that you're being attacked at night. Because they're going to train you in your sleep, the shaykhs. And they're going to train you that they're coming at night and your house is under attack and we'll see what you can do. First level is you're going to go out, you're going to have a weapon in your hand, you're going to think you're going to shoot at everybody, you're going to grab those burglars and shoot at them and all of a sudden your bullet goes shoo and drops down. And you're wondering, why I'm firing these bullets at these criminals and robbers and they dropping. Then you're going to take like a knife out to, to defend yourself and the knife, knife will go, because Allah, Allah is going to train you that there is no help and there is no protection. Your, your reality is not in armament, it's not a, a cheap uh, way of, uh, of, you're not going to circumvent this process by getting weapons because your dream will show none of them worked. Until one day they, they wake up and they realize that, you know, I, I had to make madad because everything was getting worse. The, the attacks were coming like daily in their sleep until one day they realize, aha moment, oh I have to make madad. And as soon as they felt something was coming up they began to make madad and the shaykhs appeared in front of them. And then that battle began and that becomes a second nature for the servant. They have to quickly call upon their support. And they be trained in it in their sleep and their sleep and their sleep and then they live like that. When you get in your car ask for support, you don't know how shaitan going to try to attack you in an accident from what type of direction. Immediately in your car, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem, MashaAllah, La quwwata illa billah. And that was from the secret of Surat al-Kahf. When the man came out and, and bragged about how much God has given to me, oh I have more kids than you, he's talking to a, a servant of Allah who had things but not to the level that he had is, oh you're not a blessed, I'm blessed, I have all these kids, I have all this money, I have everything. And that servant of God said, I wouldn't talk like that, that don't talk like that, don't brag and uh, Allah can take it all away and next day Allah destroyed his entire life, took away his entire garden, made it all to be like rubble. And then I as Ayatul Kareem came and said, you should have said, MashaAllah, La quwwata illa billah. That God has will and there, that there is no power except in Allah So that mashallah la quwwata illa billah is a protection every day. Ya Rabbi say, I don't know what my bad character is going to bring of your anger, mashallah la quwwata illa billah. That I'm completely under your will and that your power and authority is completely over me. Right? So it's like a fireman training, every day you get in your car, mashaAllah quwwata illa billah. If you sense something is, you know, something maybe not right today, some energy may come, a car may come from some, mashaAllah quwwata illa billah, ask for your madad, do your recitations and you live your life like that. And again we have so many of these types of examples, they say even during these calamities in September when these buildings were coming down, there was a murid in that area. 
and the murid all of a sudden got stuck in the middle of downtown New York and boom, start hearing things and dust and and the minute she or he heard something the things were going off, they described that they had a sound in their ear and then this person began to hear the voice of the shaykh giving them directions on where to run and to vacate that area. Where nothing and every panic had overcome that they heard a voice and it was very clear to them, go here, go here, go here, go here. They found themselves out of that entire area in a different street safe where their own nafs would have thrown them into clouds, debris, everything was falling and chaos and, and panic was everywhere. So. These things are very real, guidance is very real because Allah is real. When you believe and you practice, you, you practice on a sunny day preparing for a rainy day. You don't practice on rainy days waiting for a sunny day. So, I mean things are good, practice for a day that's bad. Don't say, I'll do it when it's bad, don't worry. No, you won't do nothing, you actually run into the fire because you didn't train. And you panic and go in the wrong direction, do the wrong things and that becomes the destruction and, and the difficulty that people put upon themselves. Manifest the good, manifest the love, manifest the reality, the, the energies and the connection so that I don't walk alone, I fear not for I know that my Lord is with me. And Allah gave us many ways, although I walk through the valley of death I fear not for I know my Lord is with me. How? Because His servants are so easy to reach and Allah will send their lights and their energies around us so that we never fear that we are alone and that's what's important in, in times of difficulty, inshaAllah. MashaAllah Sayyidi, uh, the reality of portals shared by dear Sayyidi has opened a lot of realities. I was reading books and books but sitting with shaykh for a few minutes and listen to him is worth reading many books. Thank you. Thank you, alhamdulillah, Allah bless you inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Alaikum When the portal to our shaykh and his heart's love for Prophet Muhammad, I feel a lot of anxiety and tightness in my heart. What's the reality of that? When, what was the first part? When the portal to our shaykh and his heart's love for Prophet Muhammad, yeah, anytime you, you do energy practices, the haiba and the majestic energy, it crushes. So it crushes the heart, crushes the energy, you feel like you can't breathe. Yeah, don't worry about your heart, don't worry about your going into the hospital, don't, don't be panicking, convince yourself it's okay, everything is great, it's fantastic, oh it's alright if I die, don't worry God wants me, nothing to fear. But People get panicky when they feel energies and then they stop and that, that's what we don't want to do. Don't, don't fear God doesn't you know, need you to be dead otherwise you would be dead already. So overcome this fear, feel the energy, sort of breathe through it and it comes. That haiba and majestic energy when it begins to tighten and like crack the chest it's also pushing many things out. There are unwanted tenants within people, they have collected many energies in their life and they're not leaving voluntary, voluntarily. So these energies that are coming, positive energies that are coming also very cleansing, very majestic, very sort of luminous filled with lights, just breathe and work through everything. Then they want to train you towards becoming familiar with different touching and feeling. You may be sitting and feel something touching you, that's okay, don't worry about it, nothing going to kill you. Don't fear anything, just sit, be patient, be calm, you come and start touching and you maybe touch your beard, don't worry about these things. Don't even pay attention to it, keep your muraqabah and your, your consciousness and connection with the shaykh. So each test is going to become more and more more and more. So nothing to fear, jasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And you make your zikrs, keep your connection, make your zikr, keep your connection. 
because their training when you begin to really train with that muraqabah and that connection then it has to be towards agitation. So if you want to see a good pilot it's not that he can put the gas in the, in the plane on the ground and take off that was his beginner course. But when you want to see a good pilot is that he's going to refuel in air where it becomes very dangerous for him because this fuel is, is can ignite on his entire plane. So he's refueling in the middle of the air makes the connection, pulls the energy and then takes off for where he has to go. So it means every level of training is going to be more and more and that's what's necessary but when you stop then you stop the process, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Forgive my ignorance, is the constellation Orion or center of the Milky Way a portal to heavens? Are the seven earths all in the same galaxy as us? Orion and Orion's belt is very important because the, the, the cave of Prophet Qarr Thur is, is the same name for the Orion's belt. So it has an immense reality. So I show you your signs upon the horizon and within ourselves. So these are, these are important realities of the horizon that they represent different realities. But most important now is within the self and the spiritual connection is that you have seven realities instead of worrying where these seven earths are is that worry about the seven realities and my seven paradise realities. Their particular location, the size is, is again back to what's necessary for us in our training right now is you have to connect with yourself. You have seven names in these seven paradises. Your job is to traverse into yourself to begin to know those names. That journey can start until you've made a strong connection with the shaykh. And that's why you make seven tawaf on hajj, you go seven times because your seven names, your seven reality and your seven paradises. Those have to be understood. So, so we keep it always on, on focus of our curriculum so that we try to achieve something otherwise just to know for knowing then it's, it's, it's not necessarily necessary. But to know from the curriculum of what you need to know on your exam is you need to know yourself. Who knows himself will know his Lord or if nafsuhu Arifa Rabbahu, so in that has an immense reality. So the one who takes the journey to know himself and his walking in his path is inside him and then to know all the realities within his self. As he knows himself he'll be drawing closer to his Lord because his Lord is located inside not outside. That's why I say the power is inside, when you're journeying inside, making intention inside everything outside begins to happen. So I don't know if people understand that. You say you want to for ex it's an example because we teach by analogy. You, you want to make something happen so you start to go build it and make it and force everything to, to be that way. But what they're teaching is actually go inside, go inside, take your journey inside, do all your spiritual practice and spiritual energies and all of these with a strong spiritual intention, with a strong spiritual reality. As you worked inside you'll turn around one day and it's all already been made for you. But when you focus on just making your physical reality of what you wanted, you forgot the inside journey. And the one whom builds only his outward structure, his inner shell is empty so the outward structure just collapses. But the one whom is busy building themselves, building themselves begins to have a miraculous connection with the Divine, everything begins to miraculously appear for that servant. These things will open in ways they cannot 
understand. That's why I say God works in miraculous ways. Anybody who's been around the shaykh they know that. Everything opens for everybody miraculously because they were busy working on themselves. Then Allah fixed everything, right? So we have a person who spent his whole life building himself, building himself, building himself. Allah sent a dead relative and gave him a whole bounty, a huge check and said, here it is. Huh? How did that happen? But he could have had a different life and said, oh, I'm going to go work every day, I'm going to go out, do this, do that, do this, do this, go hunt in this world. But that was different. So those souls whom Allah has a calling to, they're busy building themselves, building themselves, building themselves. When they build themselves that outside can already be done. So that has a miraculous nature in that. And that has the immense realities that build the inner reality, Allah can take care of all of the other. But if you busy yourself on the other, you're empty inside and that has no value in the heavens, an empty shell, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can we make the connection to Sayyidina Khidr through our shaykh, will this, will this lead to an opening of hearing? The, the connection to the shaykh is all that you have to worry about. So we described before like, like anything else in life, you know before you, you want to understand things, look at everything in, in, in your physical world. It should be more complicated. So I, I go to take a, a very advanced math class with my professor. And the professor introduces the, the dean of the university. Hey, today here's the dean, everybody meet Mr. Smith, how oh, Mr. Smith, everybody says, hello Mr. Smith. After class you go sit down and, and ask that, hey Mr. Smith if I like hang out with you can I get a math degree? Because now I know your name, how about if we like if I hang out with you can you give me like a, my math degree and maybe my English degree just give it to me? Why would it work like that? So it means that you have to be quantified and cleared through the teacher. Otherwise then what's the purpose of the teacher? If every time they want to talk on a subject and everyone wants to connect their heart to that subject it would never open because they're looking at you like, what are you doing here? We're not going to, to cut out your teacher. Sit down and go through the practices with your teacher. If he's going to open hearing for you. You have to be certified for him because nothing opens without a stand. You, know, you don't get to the gate of your airplane and not go through TSA and then 10 times they want to check you, right? You go to the gate, let me see your passport, let me show you passport. Go to the next customs officer, let me see your passport again. Why? I showed it. You open your mouth like that, they say, come to a room with us. So, no, 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 okay, here's my passport. <laughs> then you go down again to the gate. One more person asking, let me see your passport. But the time is like, you, oh, it's enough. If this is the dunya airport doing that, what do you think about Allah They're going to let you get through these gates and, and who signed off for you? Who did you train with? Who, who opened your hearing? So that's a, that's a big thing to establish the station of Samina from who? who whose lecture you heard that you didn't listen to that they're monitoring? So the one who opens his hearing means he heard the lecture, he acts upon it. We said shaitan is listening to the lectures and his minions more astute, what's the English word? Satan listens to these lectures more intense than the students. Why? Because he knows, he knows that reality. He's sitting to see what are the coordinates coming from the heavens and what are they going to reveal about his plans and his operation. So they're sitting in it and immediately trying to move and block because they have a belief, they have a yaqeen in what they're doing. But the student hears it and doesn't act upon it. It may take years to listen, they don't listen, they're halfway, don't do this do, that do. 
So ears and listening and, and tariqah, the subtlety of the heart, Shaykh says, don't speak means don't answer questions, don't talk about situations, don't compete with him in knowledges and answer back to him. But if he asks you a question that, what is this, is this dangerous? You immediately have to answer. You know, stay silent hoping he's going to fail in his choice and do something wrong. This teaching of hearing is very difficult, very difficult that you have to hear the teachings, act upon them, meditate and hear and hear your consciousness and hear how to truly struggle. When he teaches you, you have to smile and be happy, not falsely be happy, you have to be very happy. So listening is not something that the people are having an understanding on how to do. So you can't take all that away and say, can I connect with Sayyidina Khidr and he's going to open my ears? <laughs> how would he do that? Who, how would he test you? You're not at the level to even see him so how would you be opening your ears with that? So yeah, everything goes back with the shaykh, there's no way to get out of that. There's no also quick report cards. Everything's based on the discipline, the practices, the listening, the tarbiyah and they know what you heard and in your life what are you implementing. God Almighty is the principle, right? He's the one sending the lecture. So if my heart is on His radio station, whatever I'm telling to you, He's sending the inspiration inshaAllah. He's sending you the inspiration to sit there right now. So whatever was said, if we go home and don't act on it, He's the one grading. So they didn't really believe, okay, okay, we said, okay, okay. And then life events will happen and the person will eventually come to a belief. But it's not that easy, it's a, it's a discipline in which one has to really struggle against themselves to, to really conquer their nafs and understand the spiritual path, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nurjan. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, why are caves so important in Islam? From the first time while he came to our Nabi ibadah in the cave, mostly done by awliyas. Why are caves so important? I think we described last night, the two nights ago, Jabalan Autadan, Jibalan Autadan, where Allah described the concept of a mountain are pegs. So the earth when it was created was osculating, was rolling, 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 rolling. It was very What's the word for it? It was moving all over the place, shaking and quaking. And in God's creation He planted the mountains that would make the earth to be firm. So in Qur'an they're called the jibal, the mountain and awtad, that the mountains are pegs and they go deep into the earth and they stop the shaking and the confusion. So the mountain has an immense reality of strength and firmness, has its own also reality of all that lives upon it and what it carries of its reality. So then that's symbolic of very powerful souls that the earth would be upside down if not for the reality of these souls whom are ever present and watching everything. And nothing transpires on this earth without their spiritual vision everything's under their spiritual vision. So as for under understanding it would be like a, a network of satellite towers and the head of the tower is their head and it sees in all direction and hears in all directions because it's a light and an energy. Nothing, nothing moves without their understanding. And through the world of light it's very easy to understand that everything around you is a light. So your the bookshelf there are all atoms and the one who owns those atoms is Allah. And He gives the responsibility of every light and every atom. Every atom has an ability to hear, every atom has the ability to enter into it and see through it and every atom could be spoken through. Every single atom, so everything is comprised of atoms. The one who owns it 
basically could be looking at you through the entire bookshelf, looking at you through all the walls, everything. There's no way to escape their vision. So the one who owns that reality and owns that light is the heavens. If they give the key and these are different degrees of this, they can enter into everything. They can hear everything, see everything, speak through anything. So this, this yeah, God's kingdom and might is everywhere, nothing escapes God's kingdom. So the, the immensity of the mountain and the, the reality of that is then entering now into the prophets or mountains, enter into their love and the cave is their heart. So you enter into the cave and now you're entered into their reality. And that's why we taught that Ashab al Kaf was the whole enter into the love in the heart of Prophet You have to be from the character of these companions. And that was the whole establishing the character for that month that you have to do all these things if you want to enter into the heart and into the, the cave which is a heart. You have to seal your ears and everything that we talked about for this month inshaAllah. Allah address everyone, bless everyone, we'll let anybody stay up too late now. And inshaAllah we get ready for our Monday, Tuesday Milada Nabi Rabbi al Awad starting. InshaAllah Allah address everyone, bless everyone. And inshaAllah October 7th uh, the Grand Milad and uh, throughout that uh, the Milad and the Mawlids and the Zikrs and everything. Allah address everyone, bless everyone and please uh, for, for the people who, who want to make uh, additional funds uh, join the affiliate program. We made a nice video on how to do it, get your special links, take the product link, share it all over this earth and you can make an infinite amount of money from that depending upon how many people buy from your link. So those of us who are in Pakistan, India, Indonesia, you're talking you can earn some serious income by just spreading links. So what we ask people to do just from charitable, now it can be financially beneficial and alhamdulillah they become stronger and, and the, the means become better. Allah to address everyone and bless everyone, inshaAllah we keep everybody safe and sound until we see each other soon next week inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.